Good evening, you are watching Paradise TV News. My name is Mariama Bojang. First, the headlines. Article 19 through EU support have launched a project to help strengthen human rights standards. 90 migrants who refused to leave a ship has been forcefully moved using fear gas and rubber bullets. In sports, Brazil beat Cameroon one goal to zero in a friendly despite losing captain Neymar to injury. On the global front, President Trump has been asked to ascertain if the Saudi prince played a role in the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Thank you for joining us. Article 19 West Africa, with support from the European Union on Wednesday, launched a project named Strengthening Human Rights Standard. Support to Parliamentary Support Committee on Human Rights, Gambian Federation of People with Disability, and Association to the Victims of Torture during the Transition in Banjo. And as John Mendy reports, the launch is aimed at officially informing the government and other stakeholders, including the media and general public, on the rationale and expected the impact of the project. The project is worth over 21 million dollars, an equivalent of 400,000 euros. Meant for the two-year implementation process, the project is in response to the alleged human rights violations during the 22-year reign of former President Yaya Jame, leading to his removal from office in the 2016 presidential elections. That change in government in the Gambia is a window of opportunity to strengthen institutional mechanisms and undertake legislative and policy review and reform to ensure that democracy, the rule of law and human rights are upheld at all levels of government. Attila Laos is the European ambassador to the Gambia and says the project will help reclaim and rebuild trust in the government. One of the key highlights of the project is to provide institutional capacity building for the key target groups in order to achieve long-term impact to the general community of the Gambia. Mariam Jack Dentin is the Speaker of the National Assembly and says the EU and Article 19 intervention will ensure effective implementation of the national reform agenda. In a quest to strengthen human rights in the country, the project will also empower persons with disability to enhance their socio-economic status, support victims of torture and human rights violations, and their rehabilitation. Abubakar Tambedu, Minister of Justice, believes that the government has already committed to the objectives of the project.
For her part, Fatujan Senghor, the regional director for Article 19, states that the project explains their focus to be more impactful. The project, which seeks to build capacity and support the victim center, will equally support the enactment of a draft disability bill and civil society as leverage to demand accountability for human rights violations and address impunity. Gambia at the Nana Hall. The engagement is aimed at sensitizing and engaging the civil society groups on their participation in the constitutional review process. Khadija Tujalo attended the event and she now reports. After the December 2016 elections, which ushered in the Tart Republic under the battle led government, expectations were high on many, a positive change among which includes the amendment of the Gambian Constitution. The Constitutional Review Commission, which was established earlier this year, is tasked with the responsibility of engaging citizens and coming up with recommendations on amending the Book of the Land. But the concern remains whether Gambians are aware of its importance, especially within the civil society organizations. Bonifi Face Wangi is a key political and human rights activist who said the constitution should be human rights centered and not based on religions or culture. Lala Toure is an African rising ambassador who raised her concerns with the constitutional review process. A constitution helps serve as a set of rules and principles that all persons in a country can agree upon as the basis of the way in which they want the country to be governed, thus engaging citizens to take part in the process of the amendments and review process will go a long way in decentralizing and bringing the government to the forefront on decision making. Kadija Tijalo, Paradise TV News.
political science lecturer and human rights defender, Dr. Sise has been hailed for his outstanding leadership qualities, exceptional contribution and persistent efforts to Africa's development through several bold policies and innovative initiatives geared towards the building and prosperous, sustainable, regional integrated, globally competitive Gambia and by extension, Africa. Dr. Sise was awarded the Pan-African Humanitarian Award, an annual event conceived by identified pertinent issues in Africa with a view to providing a holistic and multidimensional approach to sustainable peace and development in Africa. In an exclusive interview with Paradise TV earlier today, he described the award a challenge. Uh, the security force in Cameroon have rescued three students after a rape in a camp of separatist fighters. Nine students and a teacher were adopted from the school in Kumbara on Tuesday morning. A source has told journalist Peter Ta, who has been covering the conflict in the region, that six students and the teacher are still missing. The separatist camp was destroyed in the shootout between the troops and the separatists, he told the BBC. Cameroon's northwest and southwest province have been hit by a separatist rebellion since last year. Armed groups have called on local residents to boycott school until a referendum on independence is held. Protests against marginalization by the country's French-speaking majority have been met with a crackdown. Down. The adoption in Kumba comes almost a fortnight after nearly 80 students were safely returned after being taken from a school in the northwest province. Five people have been injured and an Italian student volunteer kidnapped in a suspected Al-Shabaab night attack on a shopping center at Chakar in Kilifi country. The gunmen, whom police describe as bandits, raided the market in Makongeni sublocation, about 80 kilometers west of Malindi town, on Tuesday. Residents told the nation that 80 heavily armed men attacked the village in Galanakulalu at around 8 p.m. and started shooting in the air. They then kidnapped the young Italian lady who works as a volunteer in the area, said a local who requested anonymity due to the sensitivity of the matter. The 23-year-old woman, who was among Italian volunteers who had rented a house from which she was abducted, at Chakama Trading Center. Libyan authorities have used rubber bullets and fear gas to forcibly disembark more than 20 refugees and migrants who had refused to leave a camp ship or docked at the port in Misrata. The Panama flagship refused to off the Libyan coast as a boat began sinking and brought them to Misrata. Once there, 14 disembarked willingly but in the first document case by its kind. The Order 92 refused to leave. A joint force raided the cargo ship and used rubber bullets and tear gas to force them off the ship. The commander of the Central Region Coast Guard, Taufik Esker, told Reuters news agency by phone on Tuesday. During the 10-day standoff, the migrants pleaded to be taken to Europe, saying they are prepared to die and then be returned to detention in the North African country. The group was brought to Misrata four days after setting sail in a rubber boat with the hope of reaching Italy. While many on board said they survived torture by human traffickers in Libya, others had stories about serious abuses in official detention centers. 
Media outlets have previously heard reports of that in detention centers run by the Libyan Department for Combating Illegal Migration, which has not responded to multiple requests for comment. Libya's western coast has been the main departure point for refugees and migrants fleeing wars and poverty and hoping for new lives in Europe. But since last year, heavy pressure from Italy, which had been bearing the brunt of arrivals, resulted in the disruption of coastal smuggling networks and the withdrawal of charity rescue ships. Up next is business news. The United Nations has targeted an Iranian Russian network that sent millions of barrels of oil to Syria and hundreds of millions of dollars to directly fund the groups Hamas and Hezbollah. The complicated arrangement described by U.S. Treasury in a statement on Tuesday involved a Syrian citizen using his Russian-based company to ship Iranian oil to Syria with the aid of Russian state-owned company. Syria then helped transfer hundreds of millions of dollars in cash to Hezbollah, which functions as a political party that is part of the Lebanese government and as militia, as well as to Hamas, the Palestinian group that rules the Gaza Strip. Since 2014, vessels carrying Iranian oil have switched off transponders to conceal deliveries to Syria, the Treasury Department said, adding that the State Department and the U.S. Coast Guard had issued an advisory to the maritime community about the sanctions risk of shipping oil to Syria's government. The alleged arrangement shows how Russia has sought to undercut U.S. policy towards Syria, where Washington and Moscow back opposite sides of the civil war that began in 2011, as well as towards Iran, which the United States wants to curb its nuclear and missile programs and support for armed proxies. Today, we are acting against a complex scheme Iran and Russia have used to bolster the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad regime and generate funds for Iranian malign activity. Treasury Secretary Stephen Norton said in a statement, announcing sanctions on those it said were tied to the network. Central Bank of Iran officials continues to exploit the international financial system, he added. Sports and Global News is right ahead. Your smile. Take it with you. Wherever you go. Wear it. Share it. To welcome old friends. Or meet new ones. Brussels Airlines. We go the extra smile. Paradise FM. Paradise the best FM. radio best in town. With Paradise FM, you'll serve the latest tunes. Hip-hop and R&B. Reggae. Salsa. Balah. Broadcasting live 24-7 on 105.7 FM. As well as online streaming on www.paradisefm.gm with the best quality audio output. Find the best DJs and presenters to entertain you with a high level of professionalism. Investing in the latest high-tech equipment, your adverts are played with the best automation software that gives you an exact schedule for real-time monitoring. Absolutely number one. Let's get interactive on social media. Share your views and opinions with us on Facebook at PTV Gambia, Instagram at PTV Gambia, Twitter at PTV Gambia, and YouTube also at PTV Gambia. You can download our app on Google Play Store and App Store. Paradise TV, reflecting Gambia.
And now some sport news. Brazil beat Cameroon one goal to zero in a friendly on Tuesday despite losing captain Neymar to injury after seven minutes as results in goal made its six win and six clean sheet for the teeth side since the World Cup. Brazil took some time to recover from Nima's departure after the Paris Saint-Germain striker limped off with what looked like a groin strain. But his replacement, Richard Litzin, got the game's only goal with a superb header from a corner a minute before halftime. A slew of halftime substitute led to more open game in the second half as Brazil gradually took control. The win was Brazil's sixth in succession since they were knocked out in the World Cup by Belgium in July. The results continued Clarence Seedorf's difficult start as Cameroon coach, with his team having recorded one win in his first five games, having scored only two goals. Ghana have been made to wait until the final group game to book their spot in the Africa Cup of Nations Women finals after being defeated 2-1 in Mali by Accra on Tuesday. Basira Toure scored both goals for Mali, whilst Elizabeth Addo scored for Ghana on the penalty spot. The defeat leaves Ghana tied in Group A on three points after two matches level with Mali. A win would have all but secured Ghana's passage to the last four and taken them a step closer a place to the 2019 World Cup in France. But Mali defended superbly, counted effectively and made the most of their opportunities to stun the Black Queens. Ghana, with two changes from the opening day win over Algeria, started very well, but most of the chances were restricted to long-range effort, which Mali handled very well. That's all for sports, and we'll be back with some global news. Do you know that when you replace incandescent bulbs with LED energy efficient bulbs, you save energy? Replace all incandescent bulbs with LED energy efficient bulbs. Whenever you save energy, you save money. Tune Bacachulas, the program is jungle and dumb billion paradise TV in the Jurum Niti Bowder Reckling Solace in Yeninti Gohi, the Banjul, KMC, Sukuta, Ag Brikama, Nibaye Kochi Kampe, Grand Plassi, Ak Vui, Girin Yutanis Jurumi Gohi, Kan Mosi Don Send Bowder, Kubuka Boka Chipahmi, Kolal, 313-8070, Walla 2092110, Paradise TV, Ak Tune Bacachula. Mr. Trump. U.S. President Donald Trump has been asked to ascertain whether Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman played a role in the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Republican and Democratic leaders of the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee on Tuesday sent a letter demanding a second investigation. Mr. Trump earlier defended U.S. ties with Saudi Arabia despite international condemnation over the incident. Khashoggi was killed on 2nd October inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. In a statement on Tuesday, Mr. Trump acknowledged that the crown prince could very well have known about Khashoggi's brutal murder, adding, maybe he did and maybe he didn't. He later stated that the CIA had not made a 100% determination on the killing. That's all for tonight's bulletin, but before I take a leave of you, a recap of the main stories. Article 19, through EU support, have launched a project to help strengthen human rights standards. 90 migrants who refuse to leave a ship has been forcefully moved using fear gas and rubber bullets. 
In sports, Brazil beat Cameroon 1 goal to 0 in a friendly despite losing captain Neymar to injury. On the global front, President Trump has been asked to ascertain if the Saudi prince played a role in the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. News in Mandinka is at 8 o'clock and in Wolof is at 9 o'clock. Thank you for watching. I've been your presenter, Mariama Bojang. Good night.